If only fear dies. I came back from my trip the other day and somebody had returned a, a book that they um that they borrowed from me a, a while ago. And it was sitting on my um on my desk or on my table, and I'd like, oh, and so I'll just show you. The title is Only Fear Dies by Barry Long. It's a book that I read many, many years ago. I can't even remember what's in it, to be honest. But the title was like, it was it was so interesting coming home from that retreat and, and seeing that book there. It's like, yep, that's it. Only Fear Dies. So what I can share with you that I know in my own experience is that fear is basically what binds us to the matrix the matrix needs our fear to stay alive so that when we start waking up and of course what we wake up from is the sleep we've been in the illusion we've been living in it's an illusion and we start waking up from that what has has kept us in this illusion or matrix you can use whatever word you want there, there it has little different qualities or feelings to it but basically the illusion is something an illusion cannot be projected out because it it's an illusion it's not real but the more we are afraid of the illusion the more energy we give to it and the stronger it seems to become. Now, I would say that the last, what, four or five years, we have been fed a very big meal of fear. And I, I many times read that people would say, you know, the real virus is fear. And that is actually true. But when we are afraid, it's like something in us freezes. We don't have access to reason or critical thinking. We are so uh, focused on surviving and not losing what we want. It has a lot to do with att attachments. Emotional attachments are very fear-based, like, ugh have to hold on to it. If I lose it, then it's going to be bad. So just think about this. When you realize that only fear dies, the fear is what holds us imprisoned in a false matrix, in a false light. It's, it's just the fear that keeps us there. So if we want to be free, it's very handy to start letting go of the fear. And when the fear is gone, so just imagine, you're not afraid anymore that you will not have enough money. Because that's something that's deeply ingrained in most people that we, you know, we need money to survive. And you can just, you know, this like, I need money. It's, it's, I'm not going to make it if I don't have money. And of course, that makes no sense in this beautiful world that we live in that functions perfectly without money. I mean, the natural, the natural part of it. But when the humans came in with all these rules and restrictions and conditions and beliefs, um, suddenly we're all seeing it through the lens that we need money. And if I don't have money, I'm afraid. So imagine living without fear of not having, not having money, not having enough, all the things that we're really afraid of, they keep us locked in this grip of contraction and of duality, limitation. And as long as we have this grip of fear and we just like, that's all we see. It's like, we can't see beyond it. I need this to survive. I need that to in order to, to be okay. 
then we do not see what is already here, which I always talk about, that the kingdom of heaven is spread all over the earth and man cannot see it. Man is in the grip of fear. And that means that the sansara, the sanskara, whatever you call it, is just going to keep playing out. How do we get out of fear? It's a big question, isn't it? Because it's it's not something most of us can just say, okay, I'm I'm done with fear. I'm not going to do it anymore. Because it's wired into our system. There's so many, many things to be afraid of. And depending on your personality type, your character style, your upbringing, your culture, all these things. It depends on how much fear we put in and cert into certain things. There are personalities that, uh, you know, they're just here to enjoy life. They have no fear. They go do all the things that are, that we go like, oh my God, like for instance, climbing rock without, you know, without being attached to anything, or they just love that excitement. There's just this adrenaline rush that makes them feel alive which in a way is the opposite of like holding back and not doing anything so there are definitely people who do not seem to have fear and it may even be something in their brain where that uh, chemical is not being produced <laughs> so they have this the whole world is just you know a playground to enjoy but then there's all the rest of us where we have been so conditioned into being afraid. And I'm just going to show the book again. It, when we start understanding that the only thing that dies is fear. It's not like suddenly, you know, you have an income stream and now everything is going to be fine because it looks like this will go on forever. But underneath, even people who are millionaires, maybe billionaires, you know, there's still a fear of losing it and always needing more. It's all coming from fear. If you look at your life, just look at how much fear is being pumped into your life, you know, your children, your animals, your home, uh, your health, right? There's always this fear. So let's expose it today. Let's just really look at this fear thing that consumes us and makes us live in some kind of a survival mode. And as long as we live in that, we cannot see what is also here. We cannot tune into it. We cannot sense it because we are just in this, you know, conditioned role uh, of fear that we just don't know how else to, to live. It's like, this is what everybody does. So uh, when I talk to somebody at the retreat, who said that there is no more fear of not having money. And it's taken him a while, but it seems like now it was all gone. He does not charge, he does everything by donation. And he is not concerned about getting money anymore. And he says, everything always just seems to be a to appear there is always enough and he says i just do not think about it anymore can you imagine how liberating that is now the mind will say yeah but you know how where's it going to come from and you know i have to do this and that that is the fear speaking and i know that plays really really well of course because we're all the same here, but it was very liberating to hear somebody talk about it that way as that it's really possible. It's really possible to not engage with the fear for survival, for lack, for health, all these things. In my own experience, I've gone through a lot of loss the last three, four years, a lot, and it brought up so much fear. I have I have done some... some uh, shared some of it here where I got hacked and lost most of my crypto. Then I got scammed and my savings account was cleared. 
And I've had several more things where there was big amounts. And just imagine how much fear that brought up. And in that, there was also something in me that knew that I didn't want to live like that anymore. I just did not want to give my energy to this fear as if the only way I could survive on this beautiful planet of abundance was by focusing my little narrow mind into, you know, my security lies in my savings account or in my crypto wallet or in whatever else <laughs> just went away. And I really took it as a beautiful um, offering, actually, to let go, to let go, and to let go. So a lot of the fear that I have is gone too. This is the only thing that died is fear. Now, I'm not saying it's all gone. This is something, it's a process, you know, and it's learning to trust <clears throat> the, the kingdom of heaven everywhere, that that is always supplying us with everything we need because there is no separation between who we are and the the kingdom of heaven it's the same thing i talked about it i think it was yesterday about that there is uh, in the uh, the hall of mirrors there is no other so when that's and that's been dawning much deeper in me since the retreat there is no other so it's not me here and the money's out there and I need to get it. And there's me in here and I need to pay my bills and I need to deal with my health. That's beginning to dissolve. And in that, the fear dissolves. The fear that I talked about yesterday that I, you know, I feel, feel safe when I realize that it's all I, it's all myself. That it's not the projections of limitations and, and scare, scared things, uh, scared, scary people. When I stop projecting that out and see that it is all I, it's all me, it's all one, the fear literally dissolves because there is no fear in oneness. There is no fear in the kingdom of heaven. That may be a little too far from most people's experience. And I can appreciate that. I, I can totally understand that. But that doesn't mean that we should keep, keep it out there. We should maybe learn to allow the possibility of living without fear. And of course, instead living in the trust or in the even trust, it's more like the knowing that there is no other, that I am the source of everything, that I am the source of my fulfillment. The more I rest in that, the more things just show up in a very synchronistic way, in a very magical way, where you go, wow, I, I didn't do anything to make that happen, and this just happened. So again, the more that happens to us, the more we start seeing that, we more we we go, oh, hmm, maybe there is some truth to it, you know. So the smaller steps are very helpful, but but as long as we live in this frozen fear about the external projection from our mind. So we project something out there to be scared of, unconsciously for the most part. And then we, we create this thing out there, these people who are you know, unkind to us, who steal from us, who <laughs> empty out our bank account and our crypto wallet, you know, all these external scary figures and starting to realize that that's actually me in a dualistic form in a um, presenting itself as if it's real and as if it's different. So what I saw that at that retreat, it's like, well, God, my God, there is actually no other. It is me. It is I. And then everything started relaxing. So in that, the fear starts going away. The fear starts dying. And then there's more peace, there's more openness, and then things can just start flowing in naturally, whether it's 
looking, you know, you can look at it from here or from here. It doesn't really matter. You just start experiencing it when this grip of limitation opens up because it's us holding it back because we are afraid that it's not there and that we need to make it happen. Of course, it's all a matter of vibration, right? We vibrate fear and it's not going to happen to me. That is the projection we put out there. And then it's being reflected back to us. So we've all heard about that, you know, we need to raise our vibration or shift our energy. And that is what it is. So it's it's really addressing the fear that is holding our scary external universe together and start seeing through it that there is something something much bigger and more loving and safe very very present totally here and now and that we don't need to go into that dualistic you know i have to make it happen i have to you know fight for it or battle for it or you know work really hard for it not that there's anything wrong with working hard if you enjoy it, if it's coming from a place of, I really want to do this. This is fun. You know, I enjoy this. I enjoy working hard. I certainly do when I work in my garden. I love it. I, uh, But I'm not afraid. I'm not doing it because I'm afraid. I'm doing it because I enjoy it. So a little nudge here, you know, to just maybe ask yourself, you know, what, what, Fear is really running my life and what can I do about it? So what I want to say about what we can do about it is instead of keep feeding it or try to get rid of it, let yourself fully feel it. Let it, let it in. You can even do it right now if you want. You know, is there a part of you that's really afraid? Where do you feel that in your body? Where is it showing up? Is it in the belly? Many times it is, or the chest. So just take a breath in there. Just take a nice, kind, gentle breath into the sensations of this fear. It's, all, it's really like you're saying hello to it. Instead of going away, go away, say hello. So, so you, you allow yourself to feel that energy of fear, which is just an energy. And when you allow it to be there, it softens already. It's like, oh, oh yeah. It's, you, you build a different relationship with it like that. And then you can start listening to it. And then, and then, I mean, we're going through it very quickly. This is something if you wanted to do some deeper work, we can, so you can reach out to me and we can set up a time to, to, to work with this. Cause this is really what we all are working on is to get rid of that fear, to let the fear die. So we can see what is actually here without that lens of fear and duality and limitation. But so when we do that, you know, you listen and then in that, there's also, there can also be that question like, well, what do I really want? What do I really want? And that's where I can stitch it back to when I've talked so much about longing. The longing is the divine sharing with you what's available. It's kind of the, the kingdom of heaven, the field that is letting you know, like, well, I'm here, you know, I'm here and everything is here for you. So when you start tapping into that, then you go, oh, yeah, I want just, I just want to be at peace. I want to enjoy life. <clears throat> then you tap into what is real. And that can be very hard in the beginning because the grip and the fear is so tight that it might be hard to even connect with that, which I see a lot in my clients, you know, so it takes a little time to get in touch with this instead of, you know, but I have to, you know, I have to survive and I can't just feel this. I have to stay in this. So that's kind of a back and forth that we need to work with all of us. When, so we start getting a little more trust and faith 
in this sense inside that just, I want peace. And then little by little, and again, this is my own process, of course, it's like this becomes so much more attractive and this becomes so uninteresting that I'm more and more just saying no to that and yes to that. And then the more I say yes to this, in my chest, then I open up to it. And then that kingdom of heaven can start making itself visible to me. Where before I was locking it in because of the fears, like I couldn't let it out. I had to focus on this. So then we let it out more. And then we start seeing these synchronicities happening. And then we start trusting it more. So it's that gentle shift, you know, from the fear into what we really want. And it's a very beautiful process. Of course, if you want to learn more, you can join me this coming Tuesday, which is October 1st, where I have my monthly gathering called uh, Feel Your Deepest Longing, Find Your Divine Calling. And that's a very beautiful, where, where we really take time to connect with that longing and make it real in our lives, take spending more time there. So you're welcome to join me in that. I will put the link in the descriptions here. So let that fear die in the best way you can, or at least for now, just acknowledge how the fear is really having a strong grip on you. And then just see if there's something in you that would like a different experience. And that's when the journey starts. Okay, I hope to see you next week on Tuesday if you can make it. And otherwise, I'll see you on my next YouTube. Have a wonderful day.